There's literally a Chinese version of all the well-known companies or applications out there. Say for example, in the instant messaging, social media, online video platform, e-commerce, and also for today's topic, electric vehicle. So today we're gonna go through the Chinese Tesla, which is named NIO. Now I know a lot of investors out there have missed buying the Tesla stock when it is low. Let's see if NIO can replicate the success of Tesla. In this video, we're gonna go through NIO and tackle the key concepts that you need to know about this company. If you reckon the video has provided some sort of value to you, please hit the like button for me. That would help my channel tremendously. Without further ado, say, let's get started. Now, NIO is a premium electric vehicle producer established in 2014, and it is now based in Shanghai. Now, the Chinese name of NIO is pronounced as Weilai, which is an intended pun that stands for, first of all, blue sky coming, as well as future. It really conveys the company's vision of popularizing electric car in China for better environment, and hence the blue sky is coming to China in the future. Currently, NIO has three models on the shelf, the first one being EP9, which is a model more for showcasing. The second one we have got ES8 which is the best selling vehicle of NIO. Also we have got ES6 that is like the sportier and lighter version of ES8. Although the company has operation across the globe in Shanghai, Munich, San Jose and London. However their cars are only sold in China and it, it is also not likely to expand internationally in the short term. You will see why later in this video. Now it is really difficult to break into a mature market in the car industry. So NIO has tried really hard to differentiate their brand by providing exceptional user experience. Let me give you a few examples. Now first, NIO has built its own artificial intelligence called Nomi that allows the drivers to control the panel without having to touch the screen and distract themselves from driving. Also, NIO has built its own social media platform that allows owners or potential owners to share information on the platform which creates a long-term relationship and brand loyalty with customers through transparent and instant communication. As a driver of electric vehicle, the most foreseeable and troubling issue would be the charging experience. Unlike petrol, it's not as widely available across the city. NIO has attempted to solve the problem by providing a battery swap station. Basically, the, the driver can swap a fully charged battery by driving into this NIO cube. Also, it has a 24-7 charge delivery service. Imagine getting stuck in the middle of the highway in midnight. No worries, just call up the customer service and the charging truck will come to you wherever you are in China. And just like Tesla, they have got their, their own home charging as well as charge station solution provided to the drivers. Now we can see that NIO is really trying to establish its, its brand and uh, provide exceptional user experience, which is great for the business in the long term. However, it is also the reason why NIO can only focus in the Chinese market for now. The infrastructure and workforce required to support the holistic customer service cannot be built overnight. Now before diving into further analysis, I'll give you the quick answer for myself. For me, it is a speculative buy, meaning that I could invest a small portion of my portfolio into the stock, maybe about you know, two to three percent and hold it for a long time. NIO has a lot of risk before coming out on top like Tesla, but also at the same time, it has a very high ceiling. As at the time of making this video, I do not hold any share of NIO. Also, it is not an investment recommendation, so please exercise your independent judgment before purchasing the stock. Okay, just let me start off with the risk that I'm seeing. So the first one has to be competition. NIO is priced in the mid premium market uh, well, let's just use the most popular model, ES8, as an example. With the price of $78,000, a consumer in China could have bought, well, nearly bought the Tesla Model S with extra $2,000 of cash. He could have bought the Mercedes GLE with about $10,000 excess cash. He could have bought Audi Q8 or BMW X5. Now, they are all great cars and NIO really have to convince the Chinese drivers why it is worth more than these established brands. Also, the cash flow situation as well as the profitability of NIO at the current state is really worrying me. 
Now, building a brand in the electrical electric car industry is literally cash burning. It requires massive capex to build the hardware and also the infrastructure. Let's take a look at the financial statement for 2019, and we see that Neo is making a gross loss. What does that mean? It means that Neo is selling the car at a price below its manufacturing cost. Neo really have to ramp up their production volume to achieve some sort of economies of scale and make the per unit cost a little, a little bit cheaper. Let's also look at the other costs on top of the cost of manufacturing, which are R&D and SG&A. The two costs make up 56% and 69% of total revenue, which is massive. Let me put together a simplified profit and loss statement. Note that the numbers are in renminbi, the Chinese currency, which is equivalent to about 15 US cents. In 2019, NIO has made $7.8 billion in revenue by selling the cars, spent $9 billion on manufacturing them, spent another $4 billion on researching and development, and $5 billion on, on the administrative expenses, which led to a loss of $11 billion renminbi. If we look at the cash flow statement for the past three years, it presents similar information. So the first thing we see is the yellow bar. You might say, oh, it's positive, it's great. Uh, no, not really, because the yellow bar represents financing activities. What it tells us is that they're obtaining cash just from equity and debt holders, which are the investors and banks. If we, if we were to truly understand the operation, we look at the blue bar. It has been negative for the past three years, and the worst thing is it is getting larger and larger, which means NEO is further away from making a profit or positive cash flow. The key turnaround point of NEO in the future is when the blue bar becomes positive. That means the core business, which is selling cars, has become profitable and generating positive cash inflow. Just like Tesla in, in their earlier years, you're likely to hear about NEO running out of cash. Uh, liquidity is the single most important thing for NEO in the next few years. Should they underperform for one quarter, the investors may lose confidence and stop the funding, which is you know, a, a massive risk for NEO. Now, if NEO really is such a bad business, they are making negative cash flow, whatnot, why are we still interested to invest in such company? Well, on the flip side, I, I really see some growth opportunities in NEO. First, let's just look at the macro environment. First of all, there's a, a growing Chinese electrical vehicle market that is aligned with the government objective. And that's really important in the Chinese market. Now, China has become the world's biggest electrical vehicle market and is still expected to grow rapidly. Let's look at some statistics. Electrical vehicle makes up 4.6% of the Chinese vehicle market now, up from 0.1% in 2013. China has the most number of electrical vehicle in the world, amounting to 2.3 million in 2019. And also more than 30 cities in China are expected to achieve 100% electrified public transit by 2020. To incentivize customers, Chinese government subsidizes purchases of electrical vehicle from both federal and local government level. For example, if you are to purchase an ES8 in Shanghai, you will get a subsidy of 25,000 renminbi, which is about three and a half grand US dollars from federal government and an extra 5,000 renminbi, which is about 700 US dollars from the local government. That is equivalent to another 6% discount. Now you may be concerned about the US-China tension. Well, that surely would disrupt the supply chain of NEO. However, it could also work in favor of them. Chinese consumers are known to be patriotic, at least a substantial group of them. And as the tension escalate, they may choose to support NEO that is made in China than other American or European brands. We have seen similar cases in the phone industry where consumers choose Huawei or Xiaomi over Apple and Samsung. The bottom line for NEO is to maintain its quality of product and service. The more brand recognition they have, the safer the company is. And other good news for NEO is that they are backed by two important parties in China, which are Tencent as well as the Chinese government. For those who, who don't know about Tencent, it is basically one of the biggest Chinese conglomerate that has business uh, over social media or entertainment or artificial intelligence, etc. It holds 12.6% of the shares in NEO. While having Tencent as an investor, NEO is getting more than just money, but also the expertise in management as well as technology. 
The Chinese government is another critical factor. In recent years, China is trying to build their own premium brands across different sectors and will surely support NIO in different ways. In 2020, NIO has reached an agreement with the Hefei government to secure a loan of 1 billion US dollars from a few state-owned corporations. In return, NIO will set up its headquarters in the area. Now, historically, companies that are aligned with government objectives have achieved great success in China. Look at Tencent and Alibaba in the e-commerce or infotech space, or Huawei in the telecom industry. As the US-China situation intensifies, it is almost certain to see great volatilities in the market, particularly for the Chinese stocks. There are rumors for the Chinese companies like Alibaba, Baidu, or, or even Neo to be delisted from the US stock market. I, I can't say it is impossible, but I would say it's more of a rumor leading up to the election in November this year. I reckon China and the US are like a, a couple in dispute. In some way, they may have conflict, but in many other ways, they have got mutual interests. You, you often see American funds being the top investor of a Chinese company, and it will be of no one's interest to see a complete divorce of the two countries. Many investors have this Chinese company phobia, uh, which is totally understandable, particularly because of the recent fraudulent case of Luckin Coffee. And as a result, so many good Chinese companies have been undervalued at the moment, with Alibaba being my favorite. Again, going back to NEO, it is a highly speculative buy for myself. There are so many risks and uncertainties lying ahead. Uh, NEO still hasn't got their, their own manufacturing facilities. The competition in the EV market is fierce. The Chinese government could potentially remove subsidies for the company, and there could be supply chain disruption because of the health issue. So be extremely vigilant and careful when investing in the stock and make sure it is only a small portion of your portfolio if you do this is the end of my video if you think the video has provided some sort of value to you and help you understand more about neo please smash the like button for me and consider subscribing to my channel that would help me tremendously as a content producer thank you guys and i'll see you next time